I am so done with these bugs. I'm done with the summer. The problem is I don't want to rant about the bugs, but does anybody else, it just drives me crazy. Honestly, how people on the show, Naked and Afraid, do that, two thumbs up to them people. Number one, I would not get naked and go into a jungle and get chewed alive by bugs. I feel like if you can deal with that, you could probably make it through that show. There's no way I can do that. I flip out about bugs. Maybe they flip out about the cold weather. Cold weather, bring it on. There is a little piece of me that does like the summer though. I do like the summer. I like the warm weather just a little bit. I like that I don't have to have a ton of clothes. I don't know. It's about this much only. About that much. So welcome to another episode of Question and Answer with Dan. I'm really excited about this episode. I'm not sure why, I think I just, I'm in the mood to film. I'm in the mood to film, so it's gonna be a good episode, I can guarantee that for the most part. And in, what's that word I'm looking for? I don't know what the word is, but I'm gonna say in celebration of this episode, I wore my t-shirt inside out. But fortunately for all of you out there who just stroke out when I have my t-shirt inside out. I don't have to have it inside out because it's a company that has to do with the outdoors. So I'm gonna pretend, even though they're not my sponsor, sponsors would give you some money or something to get the job done. Not my sponsors, but White Flyer targets. You know, they make these things, you shoot with shotguns. Uh, probably the best targets on the market, okay? So thanks to my sponsor, White Flyer. Everything is going smooth. You try to set up a nice scene. Look at this mess. See the little background I set up? White flyer targets. Check them out, best on the market. If an executive from White Flyer is watching this, my father-in-law, Jeff Kaler, he should get a raise because he's the one that put me up to this. So Jeff, get a raise and then I'll just drink more of your beer when I come to your house. Quick couple updates. Other than me hating the bugs, me being a um, pretend White Flyer representative selling their targets, um, I did meet with Dutch from Dutchware Hammocks. If you never heard of it, go check them out. It was great meeting you, Dutch. If you're watching this, we have a couple things in the works. It's gonna be cool. Last update is that I didn't, I didn't break any bones on a one wheel. I'm actually getting real, real good at the one wheel. I think that I'm not gonna go pro, but I'm, I, I rode it to the post office with a bunch of packages the other day. Didn't wreck, little kids laugh at you, old people stare at you, it's pretty comical. On to the questions. Dan, I was out for an overnight in my local area and right next to my camp I found what seems to be a homeless camp. Have you ever encountered this? If so, what do you do? Okay, so I have never personally ran into homeless people. I, when I'm out trail running, there are times I run by and I'm like, obviously somebody's living there that's homeless. We don't have a huge influx of homeless people in our area. I would say the majority of them people, they just wanna be left alone and they don't want any trouble, so they're gonna probably get out of there because number one, they're trespassing, they're not allowed probably to be there or be living there if it's some type of state land or something like that. My only concern with something like that is if you get in an area and you're like, oh, there's a camp here, you just, I mean, there's all kind of crazy people out there. Like, are they cooking meth out there? What's happening? I mean, it just, it's, it's sad to say that, but you just gotta be careful. So I would say if I went somewhere in an area I never was, if it was like a state park or something, and I'm like, that's not right, I would go get the warden and let the warden know. If it's like just open land, it, and somebody, you're not sure who owns it and you're just sort of there, I'd probably get out of there. I just, I just wouldn't, why are you gonna take a chance? Just go camp somewhere else. So that kind of thing. That's all I can really say on that. I hope that the big orange targets aren't thrown off film. Is it? I don't know. Hey Dan, what's the best way to deal with mosquitoes using anything from nature? I, nothing I've ever used in nature has worked, nothing. So I, I can't give you an answer with that. I mean, I spray bug sprays on me. I use bug dope a lot. Unfortunately, today I didn't bring bug dope with me. It is sitting at my trapping house on my gear table. I have like a table in the middle I like put all my gear on and that's where I load out from. It's sitting there, I didn't bring it. And now I could just like, oh, I, I hate it. I don't know any natural remedies. I'm sure there are. I cannot even off the top of my head remember anything that I have put on me naturally that has worked. So I'm sure people are gonna tell you in the comments what they use, nothing has worked for me. Are you crazy? I, I guess. I mean, we're all crazy a little bit. 
Okay, Dan, since you're such a big fan of the Frontier era gear, if you could go back in time, would you go back to the age of American Frontiersmen and live that way or stay in today's modern society? Hey, you could even use your new skateboard to travel back in time. <laughs> so they would think you're some kind of crazy god, probably, if you just drove into town on that skateboard, then once it ran out of juice, you're, you're nothing. But would it be cool to go back in that time? Yes, would I want to? Do, do I have to stay there forever? If I had to stay there forever, I'd say no. I do like my life. I like my family. I, I don't want to leave all that. So there's so many different things you'd have to say. If they're like, hey, you can go back one month and then you come back home, I'd probably give it a go. I would like to go and see what it was actually like. I think the people were much more savage back then. Not in a bad way. I think that people nowadays are just soft. We have conveniences. We have everything we need to survive. Those people didn't have that. So I would like to go back. I like to think of myself a little bit as a savage, about that much, a little bit more than, but anyway, that I would do that for like a month. Do you have a good design for a shelter that can be made from a 12 by 12 oil skin tarp for 1840 reenactment? Uh, I did a video and I'll put the link below. I know that I'm not great at putting links below, but I promise I'll put this link below. On a freestanding shelter because normally reenactments you're not out in the woods. So it's a freestanding plow point, 12 by 12, definitely doable. And the good thing with that is it, you're gonna be able to fit multiple people in that shelter and it's gonna look awesome. So check out the link below on my freestanding plow point shelter. <laughs> Can you build a primitive shelter or lean to or something like that on public land if you use fallen trees or dead standing trees? I get, I mean, there's not gonna be a law that you can't manipulate what's on the ground. So that's really all you're doing. I would say go for it. You said that during the summer, you don't like to boil water because it's so hot and you don't wanna sit next to a fire. I get that. The heat index gets crazy high. Da, da, da. My thought is though, don't you have to build a fire to cook anyway? So if not, why just not boil the water when you're cooking your food? I know a couple people then question under that. Yeah, I thought the same thing. So when I'm talking about that, and I'm talking about like boiling water compared to carrying a water filter, I'm coming at it from a survival perspective. Like you're out there, you're lost, now what do you do? So probably you don't have food with you. So I'm gonna just take that approach. You don't have food. So now is it easier just to drink that water right from the stream out of your life straw or start a fire and boil it? That was the perspective I was taking from it. So in a bushcraft perspective, let's say we're out bushcrafting, I'm going out for a day or two. If it was right now today, say I'm going on a canoe trip tomorrow, I'm taking enough water with me. So when I have to stop and cook, I'm gonna boil water. I mean, that makes sense. You're right on page with that. But from a survival standpoint, what I'm saying is, if you only have your small bottle of water, you're a little bit low on it and you run out, why do you wanna have to stop, make a fire, boil water, let it cool, when just bring out your life straw and drink it, and then when you do affect fire, boil your water. So it's that kind of thing. I mean, you're not gonna carry just a life straw and say, well, I don't need a stainless steel bottle now. You need both for survival. You don't need both, but it's easier if you have that life straw or whatever kind of filter. Another bug question, again, I, I don't know. I use bug dope, I made it in another video. Um, the bugs are crazy. Bugs just drive me, it's just annoying. It's not that they like, I'm scared of them. It's not that them even bite me bothers me. It's just, it's like, I feel like I'm itchy. Like the whole time, I can just itch my nose, just itch and like scratch and they're just in your ear. Crazy. Dan, how long did it take to get rid of your poison ivy? About 10 days. I heard some people say batoning wood is an absolute necessity, then there are some who just drag one end of a log into a fire lay. Okay, here's my thoughts. Number one, I barely ever baton wood. I try to carry my ax at all times. If I'm in a situation that I need to get into the wood and I only have a really small knife, I'll just make shavings. The whole purpose in my mind around batoning is that you're creating a fire lay out of just something larger. So you're cutting down a big log into something smaller to get into that dry material and you can create your tinder kindling fuel, if that makes sense. So if you could just find tinder kindling and fuel, you don't need to, what do you need to baton anything? So dragging the end of that big log into the fire is fine. But if you have a log that's 12 inches in diameter, I mean, you don't need to even put that in the fire, just find something a little bit smaller. I don't think you're ever gonna be in a situation you can't find somewhat appropriate firewood unless you're in a desert or something crazy. Eastern woodlands though, you can just move probably 100 yards and find what you need. Do you use any military surplus items? If so, from what era and country can you show them to us? I have a lot of vintage military equipment. 
it, it would just be too long of a video. I would probably miss a lot of things that I have. I can start to work that into the next couple three minutes of better gear Sundays. So if you don't watch that, tune in on Sundays, I just pick out a piece of gear. Some of it's modern, some of it's just old gear, some of it's like newer gear, and then you always get people flipping out that I do gear reviews. I, I talk about gear once a week. It's sort of a gear review, but I just wanna show people stuff I use and have that I think's cool. Come on, guys. Do you use any kind of solar or gas generator? No. Uh, I have battery banks that I carry with me. This lighting is horrible. It's flipping me out that I'm dark light, dark light. I'm sorry I'm in the middle of the woods and the, and the wind's blowing. It's craziness. I have battery banks that I carry with me into the woods. I have several different ones to charge cell phones, to charge my headlamps, to charge battery equipment with my camera gear. So that's really the only thing I have. I mean, I have a big gas generator at my house, but I don't bring it out in the woods ever. What's your new thoughts on the new season of Alone? I mean, I'm, I'm happy some of the people are getting to go back out. I know some of them, I mean personally, that wanted to go back out. Uh, I don't have cable, so I, don't, I barely even watch TV. So, I mean, I won't even watch it. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I watch your all video. What's your take on the all in a Swiss Army knife or other pocket knives? Okay, two things on this topic. So number one, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Swiss Army knife all, and I don't think there's anything wrong with an all on any other style knife. But one thing that I wanted to just say to everybody that I just feel like, and I'm gonna call myself a YouTube creator now, when I create any type of content, if I say, hey, this is tape, okay? I'm, I'm showing this tape for a reason, or an all for the reason. I understand that there's 47,000 different ways to bind things together. So we can use rope, we can use glue, we can use purple duct tape, we can use Gorilla Tape. I mean, that seems to be a common theme on YouTube. No matter what you show, somebody's gonna say, well, what about... Okay, you can't cover everything in the video. So, and I, I'm not getting mad at the person who asked this question. I'm just saying, when you watch videos, usually whoever's making the content is putting it out for that specific thing. So in that video, I wanted to show alls, and I carry alls, because I don't carry a Swiss Army knife. I have Swiss Army knives, I just don't carry them. So I carry an awl with me. So that video was just around round alls and triangular alls, and that was it. So Swiss Army knives, great alls, Leatherman, great alls. I just carry a normal awl because I don't carry them other things, and that's what that video was about. That's like the fourth rant for today. I'll try to stop ranting about stuff. Instead of monkey butter gold bond, you should try fresh balls. <laughs> Best stuff on the market. That actually was a huge comic point for us this past week, me and some of my instructors, because uh, my instructor Tina said, did you see that comment about fresh balls? And, and we're all dying about it. I didn't buy fresh balls yet, but when I run out of my monkey butt, I'm gonna buy fresh balls. Sprinkle that shit on my balls. Dan, how are you planning on wiping your butt after getting bilateral wrist and elbow fractures from crashing your moto wheel? It's a one wheel, and I would have somebody wipe my ass for me. How'd you come up with your logo? Do you come up with yourself, or is there a story behind it? When my friend Dan and I really got into the bushcraft stuff, okay, we wanted a logo, and he was trying to come up with some logos crazy. Now, you see him in videos, he's crazy. So he came up with crazy videos. They were, I mean, crazy logos. They were somewhat cool, but just not what I wanted. So, with that said, <laughs> he's probably just shaking his head right now. He remembers because he was sending me all these crazy things at this design guy's place, and he's like, well, I gotta make a decision. I was like, a logo's a big decision. You don't just make this within a half an hour. Long story, but anyway, I wanted something simple. Like, I feel like good logos are simple logos. If you have this logo with all this stuff going on, it's just too much. I mean, think of like big companies, like Audi. Like, cool logo, just, it's just there. Like Pepsi, just, it's, it's just simple. So anyway, I was driving one day and I had a piece of paper and I started thinking about it and I thought, ah, it just needs to be something like, and I scribbled it down, the Cole Cracker logo, and I was like, that's it. That's the logo. So it literally sat in a visor in my car for months because I wasn't computer savvy at the time and I was like, how am I gonna get this logo into a file? Finally got a hold of my buddy, put it into a file, the rest was history. So that was really it. And I think it just signifies, people see different things in that logo. Originally it was designed, it was like campfire. Like you're just out enjoying yourself around a campfire. That's where the logo came from. Can I have your one wheel after your wife tells you to stop messing around before you hurt yourself? We're never getting rid of this. So there, you're not getting my one wheel. You're not getting my one wheel.
out of the old time mountain men, who do you think was the toughest of them all? Man, that is so hard to say. I think that the further back in time you go, so if you go back to the 1900s, to the 1850s, to the 1800s, to the 1700s, I think the further back you go, the tougher the people got. I just think in general, and we talked about this a little bit earlier in this episode, those people were like savage. Like they were just hardcore and they had to do that stuff to survive. So we're very soft now. So I can't say that one over the other, but I, if I had a pick, I would say the further back in time you go, the tougher those people were because it was just harder. They had less availability around them. So the further back you go, I think them people were just tougher. Just a different breed of people. I, don't, I just wish I had some of that toughness of what those people had to endure, because it's crazy. I don't think we have any concept. Our lives are very easy. Hey Dan, do you know if it's ever gonna stop raining here in PA? I felt like that for a while. It's been it's been dry for a little bit, so let's keep crossing our fingers. I don't mind the rain if it's like once a week, but when it was there for that while, just raining and raining and raining and raining, it, it's ridiculous. Hey Dan, is there any way to purchase your merchandise from your shop and get it to Canada? You can email us at info at coalcrackerbushcraft.com. Somebody will respond to you and you can place the order through that and then we'll just have to do either a uh, debit or a credit card via telephone, something like that. I see it coming, a one wheel skateboard drinking video and I also can't wait to see the other Dan on the board. That's a good idea, put the other Dan on the board. Drinking's a good idea too, but we should put the other Dan on the board. All right, let's call Big Dog here. He's probably doing nothing. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic This is never gonna work. System. I'm gonna keep calling him until he picks up, because this is crazy. He doesn't do anything. He's gonna go to voicemail again. What's up, buddy? What are you doing? Uh, nothing, just sitting around. Uh, well, all right, well, come over to land. Can you come over quick? Yeah, sure, be right over. All right, bye. I need you to ride that one wheel. Not gonna happen. Yeah, you have to ride the one oh, wheel. I, no, you have to ride it. I don't have the physical capability to ride that. You do, it's fine, it's easy. What about safety equipment? Safety equipment? <laughs> yeah. I, I have safety equipment. Okay. Uh, bubble wrap and tape. I mean, what more do you need? A helmet. Helmet? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> How about aluminum foil? That's, I mean, it's like metal. I mean, we'll wrap, it'll be good. All right, let's do it. All right, you ready? Yep, how are we gonna do this? Well, I think we should protect your organs, so yeah, we should wrap okay. your body. Okay. Wrap your arms. Yeah. What about your legs? No, I don't need them. Okay, so let's, the hell with your legs. <laughs> okay. Tape. I'm oh, gonna need yeah. tape. This is the good gorilla tape. I went all out for you. Oh, sweet. Let's pick up your arms. You think that's good? I think that'll protect your organs. Yeah, good fit. All right. Be careful with that. I'm gonna use that for shipping after we're done here. I think we'll just rip this off. Do you think this is a good idea? I think it's a good idea. I mean, it's worth safety first. Yeah, you're right. That one should be good. I mean, they ship fine china in bubble wrap. Oh yeah, this is the best idea you ever had. The key is just to have a lot of bubbles. Yeah. All right, helmet. Yeah. I mean, it's metal, uh, so I think it'll be okay. Would I ride a motorcycle with it? No. Good? Yeah. I think we're ready to rock and roll. So listen, uh, I mean, you look pretty good, pretty safe. Is this cool. thing on? All that you do, put your foot here, yeah. and your foot here. Right. And then you just lean forward. Okay. Lean and it'll go. Is, it, is this thing on? Get the job done. All right. Come on with it. Cowabunga, let's get her. Here we go. 
they're done. Let's try this again. What happened? Move this thing on. <clears throat> Take a good look around. Take a good look around because I might not make it. I know I am sweating. There you go. Oh, here we You go. got it. Just keep going. leaning forward. I'm keep going. leaning forward. I'm going. Slow down! Ah! Did you survive? I think the padding worked out pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it did. That was not a good idea. Unbelievable. Hey Dan, I'm new to PA. Welcome to PA. Maybe you can tie me into some community here. Bushcraft, kayak, fishing, hunting. I have a new baby, so it's not easy to just go do stuff. It has to be planned. Well, congratulations on a new baby. Also, I would say look in your local area if there's a sportsman's club and join a sportsman's club. They're probably gonna have land you can have access to and they probably have fishing or hunting there. And if you hang out there a little bit, you'll get to know guys in your area that are into the same things and then just, you know, build from there. What do you think about the Yuko Mini Candle Lanterns? Is it worth buying? Now, I'm not just gonna say this. I am one of their ambassadors, but I had one of those candle lanterns for a long time. It's probably the best candle lantern on the market. I have uh, other brands, and I have like more vintage style looking. Um, I, I don't even remember what they're called. But anyway, um, that's a great candle lantern. It folds down super nice, and the candles are, I mean, it's a great candle lantern. When you burn them candles, you use every ounce of wax in that candle. So definitely worth getting one. Everybody's watching for the thumbs down assholes. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, yeah. We didn't get them till later on in the video, right? I didn't even actually go back and look, but I know right away out of the gate, they didn't get it, so uh, <laughs> it's actually comical. So it's funny everybody's watching out for that now. Oh, one last update, and then I think we'll finish this off. We're go it's a go with the t-shirts. So we're gonna get the two thumbs down. I mean, it's, there's gonna be good t-shirts. They're gonna come out every, couple weeks, it's gonna be awesome. I'm telling you, They're, we already started working on designs. They're great, so stay tuned for that. And that's gonna be about it for today's episode. I think, man, I, I had fun doing it. I had a good time doing it. I mean, it took me all day to film. It didn't take me all day, only a couple hours. But it was great, I had fun, thanks to Dan, thanks to my wife, thanks to Jeff for the sponsorship, okay? So um, until next Wednesday, I don't know, stay in the woods, ask some questions, I won't answer them until next week. I mean, it's not perfect, but it'll get the job done. Yeah. Okay. This is like a Polish tandem machine. Because it is getting hot. <laughs>